Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to test out my new Champion Power Washer, and we're going to talk a little bit about how often should you really be power washing your machines. But before I do any washing, obviously I've got to set the power washer up, and I also need to shovel all that mud out of the tracks by hand, because that would just make a huge mess trying to power wash that much mud out. So I'll get that cleaned up, and I'll be right back. While I was getting the power washer set up, my teenage son came over and asked me if he could take the four-wheelers mudding with his friends at the back of the property. For some reason I haven't figured out yet, I told him go ahead and I would wash up the machines. As I walked down to get gas, I caught this video of them not only spinning donuts in the mud, but throwing mud at each other. First let's talk about the power washer and why I have it. So this is a Champion 3100 PSI 2.2 gallon per minute power washer. And I've had a power washer for a long time. And when I bought it, I bought the cheapest one I can get. I think I got it at Walmart. I don't even remember the brand. And I was starting to have a hard time keeping it running. So I decided it was time for an upgrade. And I've already got a lot of Champion products. I've had very good success about leaving these these uh, generators and log splitters and my winch and everything else setting out in the rain and it still works perfectly every time. So I have a brand loyalty to Champion. I contacted them about the power washer and they sent this out to me to demonstrate. So I'll be using this on a regular basis and let you know how it goes. Setup took about five minutes. We've got wheels to put on. They've got a pin with a a lynch pin on the back just pop right on then you bolt on these two legs right here this clips in and the wand the wand handle so you've got six total bolts that you put in and it's good to go then of course you got to put gas and oil in it they supply the oil should be ready to crank All right, the tracks are mostly cleaned out. So then we've got a gas on switch right here and a choke switch here. There's a kill switch. Should be ready to fire it up. One more thing before you fire one of these up, you always want water running through it when you start it. And you don't want to leave it running without water going through it because that's what cools it. Even though I dug a lot of this mud out of the tracks by hand, I still could not believe how much mud was left in them. Because I would spray it out and then come around to a different angle and spray more out. And even before rotating them, it took forever to get all the mud out of the tracks. And doing this every time I use it would not be worth it to me. So for all you guys who have track machines, tell me how often do you clean all the mud out of your tracks and how important do you think it is? On a similar topic, I got into an interesting discussion online about how often or how thoroughly you should wash your tractor. And I was surprised by some of the answers people gave. Now I'm not trying to pick on this particular gentleman because... Everyone can do whatever they want with their machines. It's a free country, and if it makes you happy, then all the best to you. But what he was describing was he had a new tractor, and it took him about two hours to power wash it after he used it. And in this case, he was just mowing. And I really questioned 
if that's worth it at all. Now, I started off as a tractor owner with the opinion that it's a tractor, and tractors are supposed to be dirty. And still, cosmetically, I have no interest in having my tractor look clean. Where it becomes interesting is the idea of just being conscientious and taking care of your equipment, and that by cleaning it, you're more likely to see problems that maybe something's broken or starting to be damaged and you won't see it if you don't take that time. But on its own merit, I just, I assign a dollar value to my, every minute of my time and I don't know that the time spent power washing is a good investment. Well, my first impression of this is that there's no such thing as a clean skid steer unless you never use it because I've power washed the heck out of it and I think as soon as I rotate it, I might have to do it again. What I was just saying about not feeling like washing my equipment was a good investment of my time. I'm not trying to tell anyone else what to do. I'm just trying to decide for myself and I enjoy the conversation. So tell me what you think. Is this wasted time right here or is it an important part of machine ownership? Now if we generalize and say that you're more conscientious people are going to keep their machine really clean. My next question is, are those same people also being careful to keep their machine covered all the time? So I like to keep my machine covered all the time and keep as many attachments as possible under a roof because in general, I don't think that water and equipment mix very well. It leads to rust and washes the grease out of your bearings and everything else. So it seems a little counterproductive unless after you wash your equipment you're also blow drying it. So my question today is, does it make sense to go through that? I spent an hour just getting mud thrown all over me trying to get the mud out of those tracks. And as soon as it's halfway dry, I'm going to spend all day running it in the dirt again. I think you'd just be doing it for the sake of doing it to me. I think that you do need to get the majority of the dirt out of there almost every time you run it you don't want that to build up in your tracks and get packed in tight but completely getting every bit of it out for someone like me is kind of a waste of time now the tractor may be a different story and there's different considerations on that so i'm going to bring the tractor over here and i'm going to put some solution into the power washer and we're going to soap it down and try to get some hydraulic oil off of it So now I've done what I did with the skid steer, and that is to take 
just water and knock the majority of the mud off. Not 100% of the mud, just a bunch of it. And this is where everyone can do anything they want. I don't care if you wash your machine 16 hours a day and sleep the rest. That's perfectly fine. But for me, people who tell me I need to wash my machine more, like, that's grease right there. The only way to get that off is to apply soap, let it soak, and then come back and wash it again. And I'm going to do that right now, but I can't see doing it on a regular basis. You know, I pumped that grease in there, and the grease on the outside of it is nasty and dirty, but it's still got clean grease on the inside. So the only thing I think you need to do mainly is wipe the grease out of that around that zerk and pump new grease in and beyond that I don't know that I want to force this grease off is going to push water in inside that bushing or around the grease zerk and that's counterproductive so I don't get real excited about power washing things that have a grease zerk now I do have an interest in power washing the back of the tractor where I've got some hydraulic leaks. In tomorrow's video you're going to see me take the backhoe off because I've got some work to do on the hydraulics back here that I think is going to be interesting. Sometimes I have some hydraulic leaks back here and they're hard to tell where they're at because the entire back of the tractor has hydraulic oil all over it. So I'm going to soak all this down and then soap it up and then wash that off so that if I get new hydraulic leaks, I'll be able to see them. But as I talk about not wanting to power wash things with bearings, you know, somebody told me that they power wash their deck on their, their mid-mount mower after every use. And to me, that whole top of that deck's covered in wheel bearings. I try to keep mine inside when it's not in use because I don't want it to get wet. So we're going to force water into the wheel bearings on the deck, I would rather just hit it with a with a leaf blower and just get all the excess junk off of it and maybe lift it up and and spray out the underside a little bit off the off the bottom of the deck, but I just can't see power washing that after every use. I've got this concentrated industrial purple degreaser from Zep. There is a reservoir on the bottom of the power washer that you can put your cleaning solution in and then you put the widest tip on the power washer and it creates a vacuum and it pulls that soap up and mixes it in with the water you're spraying. So first I did that and then I washed it all off. At some point while I was washing the tractor, the battery died on the camera, but you can see I was able to power wash all the grease off of these pins, and she came out pretty clean, about as clean as a, a tractor of mine is going to get, but I'm completely head to toe covered in mud. Was it worth it? I don't know, but in about eight hours, I'm going to get out here and cover this sucker in mud again, and I hope you'll come join me. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'm going to put links over here to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.